Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. As many of you know, I recently traveled to Austin, Texas for Demysticon 2024, hosted by Michael Shiloh DeLay and Anastasia Bendenbury of the Demystifying Science Podcast. Their meeting was a great success with about 80 participants, both in person and on the live stream. I was amazed at the distances that some people traveled in order to attend. Participants came from the Netherlands, England, Idaho, Connecticut, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Florida, and the Chicago area, and that was just a sample of the group that attended. On April 8th, the second day of the meeting, it was cloudy in Austin. Despite the extensive cloud cover, totality could be visualized. Here's a great picture of the spectacle in Austin, as photographed by Mike Godzina. Here is another neat photo. It is an image of the partial eclipse projected onto a dinner plate by Anastasia. While in Austin, I presented two talks and there was also a question period. Michael and Anastasia plan to release all of this on their channel soon, so keep an eye out, especially for the question and answer period, as there was some really interesting discussion. After my talks on April 7th, my wife and I started to drive back towards Ohio. We traveled to Conway, Arkansas and viewed nearly four minutes of totality the following day. We had perfect weather with sunny skies, no interfering clouds, and a light breeze. I was able to capture a few pictures with my camera, but they were not as crisp as I had hoped. Still, I was delighted to view the eclipse with Patty. My son Luke, with whom I had shared the 2017 eclipse just east of Kansas City, had clinical duties in Florida that day and was not able to travel. But he did assemble viewing glasses for his fellow residents and sent me this picture of partiality taken with a filter over his cell phone. Meanwhile in Ohio, my friend Jim Gallioni was able to capture these pictures of the eclipse. Here is a picture of Michael Kamala's family having fun together during the eclipse. Some wonderful shots of the eclipse were taken by David Tipton in Mogador, Ohio. Here is a piece de resistance from him. Crystal got these pictures of the eclipse through a cloudy sky in Hamilton, Ontario. And finally, these photos were taken by Don Kowalczyk, an extremely knowledgeable member of the Madison County Amateur Radio Club. Some of you might know that I hold an amateur extra license. My call sign is KD8ZKN. Unfortunately, I have not participated in my club as much as I would have liked, but hope to change that in the coming year. In any case, Don's pictures were spectacular. But I have to say that I was most impressed with my sister Lucy. She teaches French as a second language to Cree children in Waskaganish, Quebec. Of course, their first language is Cree. Waskaganish is about 15 hours north of Ottawa by car, much of the drive on gravel roads. Waskaganish was treated to a 75% partial eclipse on Monday. In order that her elementary school children could enjoy the spectacle, my sister first sought permission to view the eclipse from Hannah Moses, the school principal. Then she received laminated cardboard from the school librarian, Sarah Hester. At that point, with the help of her husband, Ronal, another teacher, Marilyn Jean, and her grade 6 students, a total of 204 protective helmets were assembled by taping protective filters onto a cardboard gear designed by Lucy. Children from grade 1 to 6 were able to view the eclipse in Waskaganish. Lucy truly embraces her teaching vocation, not only in her French subject matter, but also in science by ensuring that her elementary school students could safely view the eclipse. Well, that is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed Sky Scholar this year. Summer is about to commence in Ohio, and I plan to leave Sky Scholar now until the fall. I have a few upcoming talks, some in French, and plan to upload those as they are completed. Steve Crothers is also planning new material for the coming months. In any event, for more than 10 years, I have been planning to address the White Dwarf, and now this has finally been completed. I urge everyone once again to view these videos and to share them with others, including members of your local astronomy club and astronomy faculty. I look forward to addressing wolf Rayet stars in the coming year, along with luminous blue variables and planet formation. In the meantime, thank you for viewing these videos on Sky Scholar and for helping to disseminate these ideas. Have a great summer!